to Desert Smoke Reviews. I'm Wyatt. Jessica. I'm Monty. Today we're taking a look at the Romeo Neapolietta Reserve. Uh, Monty, this is your cigar. What, what is this cigar called? I believe it's the Habano Reserve. Habano Reserve. Ah. It doesn't say that on the band. No, it doesn't. That's mm -hmm. a little bit odd. You'd think is, they would put that on there. You'd think they would put the name of the cigar on there. I think it used to be on there, didn't it? I Habana think so. Reserve? No, Tony. Our local shop owner says no. What does he know? Let's, uh, Let's take a look at this cigar. This is a big, beautiful, it has to be a Churchill cigar. Very, very smooth. You know, it looks smooth, it feels smooth. Um, which is kind of surprising because you can see a lot of veins, um, seams are, are very <laughs> visible. But uh, yeah, to the touch, to the look, I mean, just a very smooth looking cigar. Uh, no imperfections, no stretch marks. Beautiful, beautiful looking stick. Um, let's see on the aromas. I don't get much on the wrapper, maybe just a little bit of uh, tobacco, but on the foot. Some nice, real rich, uh, sugary type type of sweetness smell coming up. And to me, I, you know, I always associate that with caramel. It could be something, could be something different, but there's definitely a lot of art. There's a lot going on with the foot. Uh, pretty much the same thing as the head. It might be a little bit more tart at the head, but uh, very, very nice. Just yeah, it's very, very nice cigar. Um, I have a few lumps, but overall, <coughs> excuse me, you know, very smooth. Lots of fine veins, but overall looks very, very nice. I agree. Off the wrapper, I don't get much at all. Maybe just some nice tobacco um, aromas coming off of it. And the foot, I agree. It's very sweet, but it's got something, something there I can't identify. Maybe the tartness is the word for it, but there's something very unique about it. One. Yeah, pretty much exactly what the guy said. Um, visible seams, there's one little stretch, but uh, it's incredibly smooth. You know, there's a lot of fine veins to it, but uh, just a real pretty golden brown wrapper. Um, not much off the, the wrapper as far as aroma, it's just some, a light tobacco. And off the foot, to me, a lot of sweetness, a little bit of hay, maybe some earthiness, just real pleasant <laughs> aromas. Let's get it cut up, lit up, see how it goes. By the way, we, we had a commenter ask about the lighter that I used, uh, saying that this was a Zippo. You know, I, I've never used a Zippo to light a cigar, I don't, therefore I don't have anything against it. This is a Thunderbird, I absolutely love it, I can't. And it uses butane. It, and does. it uses, yeah, it uses butane, it's a soft flame, it doesn't stand up to the wind very well. Uh, of course, this may be a review where I've mentioned that I use it and I'm unable to use it because of the wind. But um, I love it. I'd recommend getting one. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Anyone? Anyone? If you have the means? Actually, the quote is, it's so choice. If you have the means, I highly, highly recommend picking one up. I thought there was like a dig at calling me four or something. But, you know, it's not expensive. I only spent like... 20 bucks, I think, on the other side. It's Ferris Bueller. Yeah, I was... Okay. I, I was about to say... You Sorry, you have to remember, Ferris Bueller came out literally before Wyatt was born. Man, that starts really nice. Well, that's really smooth, yeah. Um, very woodsy and caramely. Caramely? Caramely, yeah. It's got that kind of sugar coating. I think it's just a bit of spice off of it. And definitely a lot of wood. I don't get any spice. I don't get any spice either. Not a bit. A little bit. I'm not tipping my tongue. Really, like White said, mine is super smooth. It's really nice. It is very, very smooth. Very nice start. Let's get in the first third. Well, we're about 10 minutes into this Romeo and Julieta, whatever it is. Um, it's very good, I can tell you that. I'm humping my leg. <laughs> I'll keep it, just go. Okay. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. Yeah. Uh, anyway, very smooth cigar, very, very good. Um, no flavor changes, uh, and I've, you know, I've had a couple of Romeo and Julietas before, and for me, they're almost always kind of one note. It's a good note, but uh, they're just kind of uh, one-trick pony type cigars, but they're all very good. 
This one is one of those cigars that at least so far I'm hoping the flavors don't change. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's actually, I've had a little bit of a change. I mentioned with some spice that has died off. It's a nice woody note. Um, nice some tobacco coming in as well. Um, maybe an undertone of like a nice dry earth, but mostly it's just nice woodiness and some tobacco coming. It's not a very mild medium in body. Not a lot going on. Same strength, but very, very smooth, very enjoyable cigar. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've really liked it the first few minutes. Uh, the burn's been excellent. The ash was super firm. I, ju I just had to knock it off the end of my cigar. Um, but to me, it's it's um, a little bit earthy, but very a lot of cedar to me. It's a very cedar cigar. So very nice, though. Well, let's get into the second, third approach, the midpoint. Let's see how it goes. Well, we're about halfway through this Romeo and Julieta. Uh, you know, that's too... Would you like to... Uh, I thought you were going to ask. What? Well, as, as you were. Uh, what? Wait, let's start over again. Uh, what's, this, what's this cigar called again? Romeo and Julieta Habano Reserve. Habano Reserve. All right. Well, welcome back. We were about I'm halfway. I'm leaving that in there. You know that, right? God damn it, Justin. I mean, uh, gosh darn it. Heck it all the fudge. Um, uh, Romeo and Julieta Habano Reserve. Reserve. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're about halfway through this cigar. It's very good. Um, not too many flavor changes. Uh, it's gotten a lot thicker in, in the second half. And it's also a little bit drying, if that makes any sense. Um, but uh, that, that real smooth first puff, that may be pretty much gone for me right now. Uh, but the flavors are still really good. They're definitely keeping me interested. Uh, really nothing to complain about. Pretty great construction. I only made one or two touch-ups, and I probably didn't need to make them. Uh, yeah, so far so good. Yeah, I agree. Very nice smoke. I've made a few touch-ups, and, and they did need it. Um, but overall, I agree. It has gotten a lot heavier in the smoke. It's almost, I don't want to say creamy, but very thick, very ample. It's a very woodsy or, or cedary. It's it got a lot of wood flavor. It kind of a, I agree, like a drying earth flavor to it. And, and kind of, I'm glad we have a cup of coffee because it does it. It dries your lips. There's no oil sheen. But overall, still very good cigar. Uh, still relatively smooth, in my opinion. Uh, running around a mild to medium in body, the same in strength. But it has picked up a little bit, and it's still very, very enjoyable. Almost exactly what Justin said. Uh, I touched mine up once. The burn's been really good. Not quite razor straight, but really good ever since. Still a nice, firm white ash. Still lots of cedar. Um, it's a little bit more fuller flavored uh, once we hit the halfway point. But lots of smoke and also that drying sensation. So exactly what Justin was saying. I'm really enjoying it. Let's get into the final third. See if we can do changes. What, what Justin made my head discuss those stupid carpet baggers. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> the video. Leave it on the video. Fuck it. Fucking carpet baggers. Like what? I'm a carpet bagger. Well, we're at the last third of this. Uh, what are we smoking again? Habano Reserve. Habano Reserve. Habano Reserve. I've, I've heard it several different ways. It's a good cigar anyway. Um, yeah, overall, you know, it was kind of kind of the typical uh, Romeo and Julieta cigar for me. Not, you know, amazing, but not bad. You know, this would be a good. Um, well, we're smoking this at the end of the day, and it fits with the end of the day. But for me, it's more the size. You know, this uh, big Churchill with the with the wider ring gauge, so um, it had a little bit more going for it. But uh, I could see in a smaller size that this would be more of maybe even a morning, definitely afternoon type cigar. Um, this is also one of those cigars that is an exceptional task type of cigar. It had good construction. I could see bringing this out on the golf course and flashing it for a full game and, you know, doing a really good job. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd have to give it, i give it a 7.5. It's something I'd keep in my humidor, but uh, not something I'd rush out to get a lot of. Uh, it's also something that if you gave this to a friend, this would be kind of a good starter cigar. I mean, it's just an all-around good cigar. I agree. It's a very nice smoke. Um, I think it's a little, I don't know, I would say a bad morning cigar, mostly because it's very woodsy, uh, kind of earthy, and I just am not looking for that in the mornings. I like the more kinetic, very creamy, buttery, smooth cigars, and this doesn't really fit the bill for me. Uh, I can see this in the afternoon. I see this as a task cigar, a golf stick. Um, the size that we were smoking, it, it fit really well for the end of the evening. It was very big, robust, but 
Didn't really deliver in robust flavors. Very mild to medium. One dimensional. As I mentioned, kind of mostly a, a woodsy, cedary flavor throughout. A little bit of tobacco and earthiness. Um, kind of drying in the second half. Um, relatively smooth. Smoke is very thick. But I, I'd go a little lower. I'd go a solid seven. I enjoyed the scarf. I'd definitely smoke it again. But it just didn't have a lot going for it. It's very one dimensional. Very smooth and very nice, but just not a, a lot of wow factor, not a lot of flavor changes. So a solid seven for me. I kind of agree with what both the guys said. Um, it was relatively one note, if you will. Mine was a little bit of earthiness and cedar throughout the whole stick. Um, it burned really well. The construction was good. I didn't have a single issue with construction. I touched it up once, and then after that, it corrected itself and stayed true the whole time. Um, nice, firm white ash the whole time. Uh, nothing harsh about this. Even I'm down to, I've got about an inch and a quarter left. Um, the flavors have gotten maybe a little more intense, but nothing I would call harsh. I mean, I could smoke this thing down probably another half an inch real easy. Um, I don't think it's a morning cigar. I agree with Justin on that. Um, but I think it's a cigar that pretty much anybody could handle, more or less. Um, and I, I like the size. You know, it's, it's, it's a big, wide Churchill, and I think that's kind of become unpopular, it seems like, here lately. And I think Churchills are really cool every once in a while, especially if, if you're going to smoke one cigar tonight, you might as well smoke a big one and enjoy it for a good hour and a half. Um, that said, it's not a great cigar, uh, so I, I would stick with why it's seven and a half. I agree with that. Um, I, I have a couple more of these at home. I don't know that it's something that I'd want to keep a box of around, but I certainly wouldn't turn one down. Well, in conclusion, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, smoke if you got them.